Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be talking about the top three millionaire habits that helped me transform my life. And I hope that adds some value to yours as well. So these habits are not just about making money or creating wealth, but also giving you the ability to uh, have a successful and fulfilling life. So let's just jump right in. So habit number one is mindset mastery. So one of the most significant shifts for me was adapting that millionaire mindset. And this means that you gotta make sure that your goals are clear believing in the ability to achieve those goals and staying positive even though you face those challenges. By adapting this mindset, you begin to attract opportunities and taking consistent actions towards your success. So here are a few examples of mindset mastery. So the first one is positive thinking. So when you're curating a positive mindset, it involves focusing on the solutions and opportunities rather than dwelling on the problems. So instead of saying, I can't do it, Someone with a mindset mastery may say, I'll be able to find a way to make this work. And that's just a change of mindset of saying, like, if there, you have a problem, instead of saying, like, I can't do it, I'm just gonna throw my hands up in the air. You have to say, like, I can figure this out and just pre-adapt that. So resilience is also important. So when you're faced with setbacks or failures, individuals with the resilient mindset, these challenges are as opportunities to bounce back stronger and more determined to achieve their goal. So visualization is extremely important because it's a technique used by individuals with mindset mastery and they can actually take that and vividly imagine your goals that you want in order to be successful. This can help you build confidence and motivation. And for instance, they might create a mental image of themselves achieving that personal or professional milestone. So if you're wanting to get a new job or if you're trying to like learn a new skill, if you can visually see yourself achieving that job or getting that uh, new skill, you have a much higher increase of chance of actually achieving that. And that's really important. If you wake up every day and you're miserable about your job and you've been working really hard at night and, and try to learn different skills or to progress in your career, if you can visualize it and know that's going to be coming your way, then you can easily obtain that. So adopting a abundance mindset is the belief that there are plenty of opportunities and resources available within the world. So people with this mindset are not limited by the scarcity of thinking. They believe that there are not opportunities for everyone to succeed. But you really got to remove yourself from that mentality of like, it's the eat or be eaten and that there's just not a food on the table for everybody to have a piece or have a slice. And there really is. So these examples illustrate how mindset mastery can positively impact various aspects of life from personal relationships to career development and overall well-being. So by developing these mindsets, individuals can better navigate life's challenges and achieve their targets. So habit number two is continuously learning. So millionaires constantly invest in their knowledge and skills, whether you're reading books, attending seminars, or watching educational videos, the habit of continuous learning has been a game changer for myself and it opened a ton of doors. Uh, to new ideas, the new strategies and opportunities, and that propelled me towards my financial goals. So here are a couple examples which helped me out. Conferences and workshops. So make an effort to attend these uh, industry conferences and workshops, both in person and virtually. These events provide opportunities for uh, networking, uh, learning from experts, and gaining the insights into the latest industry developments. So if there is a mastermind meeting that's online, it's easier to jump into one of these workshops, kind of talk to the community, and that way you can actually really learn things that you may not have thought about with regards to personal finance or maybe uh, real estate. So in other videos, we've talked about mentorship a little bit and recognizing the value of a mentor. Uh, you seek the experience of that professional in the field at which you wish to provide guidance and, and advice from. So the mentor can help you navigate your career and make informed decisions. This will guarantee get you further ahead, uh, paying for a mentor and sitting down in these groups together and you're gonna be avoiding all those mistakes that you probably could have made in the past and really just kickstart your future so that you can just get going with your goals. So I don't really like reading books too much, but I do like listening to podcasts as well as audiobooks. And I have to do the best to become a better reader. What I've discovered is when you read industry-related books, journals, and articles, it keeps you up with the latest trends and best practices. So, But you might subscribe to newsletters, blogs, and podcasts to stay informed. And depending on the category, what you're trying to learn from, uh, this really will kickstart your, uh, your knowledge. 
So by regularly like seeking feedback from colleagues and supervisors and reflect on your work to identify areas for improvement. This is something that is a little bit difficult for a lot of us to kind of handle. We don't like being criticized or kind of uh, reflected or have that uh, that microscope down over top of us uh, judging us and uh, how we're kind of performing. But if you look at it as that, if you are if you were to fail in something, you definitely go learn a lot quicker, at least I do. And you're gonna remember that as a fail, uh, as a failure, but what you're gonna get out of it is so much more as a life lesson, if you look at it in that perspective. So uh, this self-awareness helps you target specific skills for developing, for development from the outside perspective. And they may catch something that you're doing that you could probably perform better with. And that's if you're creating like a YouTube video or if you are uh, working with your hands and the trades, this will definitely just give you that outside perspective to really make you uh, a lot more stronger as, a, as an individual. So habit number three is financial literacy. Uh, this is not really a very sexy topic, but when you're building wealth it requires understanding how money works. And I personally had to educate myself on personal finance, investments, and wealth building strategies. Things that I don't really have interests with, I like to just farm out and talk to the professionals. And this habit helps me um, make those informed decisions and manage my money effectively. So, and uh, this gives me the ability to grow my wealth and the wealth for my family. So creating a monthly budget is a very important. So uh, creating that detailed monthly budget will outline their, uh, your incomes and expenses and financial goals. So this budget includes categories like rent, mortgage, utilities, groceries, transportation, entertainment, and savings, uh, the name of few. And that way you have a real idea of what is your P&L statement. So money coming in, money going out, it's just that simple. I also have a free budget organizer that you can also use for yourself for your expenditure finances. And check that out in the link description down below. And if you're also on the Airbnb track for doing short-term rentals, I have a great uh, spreadsheet that I'd love to share for you uh, also for free. So today we're lucky with tracking our expenses because you can digitally track everything that you're going through. It's no longer just like a just uh, wait till the end of the month, get a piece of paper. You have all the apps on your phone, you can actually scroll through and and a lot of the banking apps, they actually tell you what they are. Are they expenditures for food or are they clothing or is it entertainment? And they already kind of break it down based on that company that is already uh, part of that app. So it does help quite a little bit. Uh, it also helps you with your business as well, knowing what is a good uh, expense for business write-offs for at the end of the year versus a personal and maybe even tracking for your um, uh, personal uh, tax uh, season as well. So, so growing up, we never really discussed financial goals. It was nothing that was ever talked about on the table. It was kind of like a full pal topic. And it really did prepare us to get out to the real world and realize like how many responsibilities you're gonna have as a young adult. You know, money coming in, money coming out, and the taxes and all that kind of stuff. So, so based on the financial priorities, then you need to set specific financial goals. So these goals might include uh, building emergency fund if you want to quit your job, for example, uh, or if you're if you're not sure if you really want to stay in that as a career, you can save that a, a six months or or nine months worth of uh, emergency just in case something happens. Or if you want to save uh, for uh, a vacation, you can take out a certain percentage or say $200 a month or whatever it is for a one really nice vacation at the end of the month or sorry, at the end of the season and uh, also paying off your credit card debts as well. So none of us want to do it. We see that statement come in and we kind of hit it all. We wait till last second. But if you learn anything from Rich Dad or Dad, if you had a chance, maybe I'll add a link down below. But uh, take, a, take a read of that book. That's the Easy Fundamentals about how the poor dad basically wait till last second to pay off those bills for the rich dad, pay them off right away. And when you're waiting to pay off your bills, then you don't want to risk forgetting about it and being hit with that 20% or higher interest rate uh, to uh, start taking away from uh, your account. So that's just you bleeding money for no reason. So we talked about this a little bit to emergency fund. So things happen all the time, furnaces break, uh, you need a plumber to come to your house or maybe your car breaks down. Uh, this way, I have an emergency fund. It's, it is tough to kind of classify as that because you think that putting to a savings account, that's your emergency fund. It's better for you to have a completely separate account just for that specifically so you don't touch it. And it's important because 
it covers unexpected expenses, just like that. They make regular contributions to this fund as a, as a really good idea. So you can take maybe 10% or 5% of your weekly or bi-weekly income and just keep that. Anyways, I hope that this was super helpful for you. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below for more content like this. And I can't wait to show you guys the next one. Take care, be well.